Uh, what's going on guys? Uh, welcome back to this channel that's all about architecture, engineering and construction, okay? Uh, it's been a two weeks marathon of, of serious work, eh? so um, forgive me where I've, where I've not been really consistent in posting the videos, but surely whenever the time is available, I'm always here to share with you information regarding real estate, construction, architecture and things like that, okay? Yes, um, first of all, before going to the video, uh, thank you very much to those of you who are returning subscribers. I really do appreciate the support. And those who are not subscribers yet, like, what are you waiting for? Eh? What are you waiting for? Anyway, um, we'll just dive right into this video. Now, this is really a Q&A, uh, about three weeks, about, um, about two weeks ago, uh, we organized the Q&A session. Um, some of the questions I responded in the comment section and others that I was not able to respond to in the comment section. Most of these questions were asked more than once. So I thought I should come and share them here so that anyone that has similar questions around the real estate industry in Uganda can get a sneak peek into this into these things okay uh, so um without wasting a lot of your time i'll go right into it okay so the first question um someone is asking about uh, the, the advantages and the disadvantages of using uh, biodigester septic tanks um, um first of all the biodigester septic tanks uh, you know they are they are they are an emerging technology first of all but they are really working for some people and others are really having complaints about it. Uh, first of all, we need to understand that biodigest, uh, that biodigest and septic tanks are working on a principle that um, on a principle of, of decomposition of organic matter using the, the both aerobic bacteria that work in the presence of oxygen and anaerobic bacteria that work in the absence of oxygen. Okay, and that very small tank that you see there. Now, this organic matter after you've done uh, you, you finish using the toilet after it goes into the septic tank. Uh, they are basically two chambers, you know. So the bacteria in these biodigested septic tanks are supposed to digest that uh, organic matter and break it down into um, and break it down into carbon dioxide, uh, gases like methane, and also into water before it's actually finally released into the into the soap pit. So they are designed in such a way to handle uh, generally organic matter. So so if so if you find yourself using detergents that are not um, that are not friendly to bacteria, they are actually going to uh, distort that process of, of decomposition of that organic matter okay so you are not uh, so you are literally not supposed to use uh, things like soap uh, things like detergent in the toilet okay and then also you are not meant to be using uh, things like hard papers you know they are, they are designed to handle lighter materials that are not actually organic uh, things like soft tissue toilet paper uh, so if you are doing it for uh, for probably apartment or rental units uh, uh, it might not work for you because you're not going to be there every time controlling the tenants telling them what they should do and what they should not okay but if you're doing it for your home where it's easily where, where it's easy to control the people and you know that we're not pouring soapy water into the toilet that will work for you so that is where the challenge comes in so if you don't take precautions like those you find that um, um so you might not have a good experience with the technology and you might be to learn the technology but it's actually working for some people that I actually I know okay so but, but this technology has really been working for people I know people that have actually used it for seven years now and it's doing fine okay and I know others that have actually used it for about uh, three years five years and they already complain okay so do really, you need to understand the basics or the principles which you have to follow if you are to really benefit from these biodigester septic tanks okay then the second question so someone is asking, what is better, uh, buying a condominium or building your own house? Okay, so um, I need to understand where you're coming from, whether you're asking what is better in terms of uh, in terms of pricing, or in terms of living, or in terms of longevity, or you know. Uh, but anyway, just just to break it down, um, the, the condominium system has been there for really quite a number of years. In many developed countries, it really, it's really working them. It's, it's really working for them well. And uh, in our African countries, uh, Uganda in particular, uh, it's really an emerging thing. Uh, first of all, our real estate industry is not as regulated, uh, including the condominium law that, that just came up recently. Um, there are still a bit of uh, flexibilities here and there. Uh, 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 so what I'm going to do for you here, I'm literally going to maybe I can give you the advantages of, uh, of uh, buying a condominium and also the disadvantages vis-a-vis uh, -vis the other option of actually building your own house 
you know so it really depends on the context of which you're bringing this from or of which you're, so it really depends on the context uh, from which you're asking but if if you're really into buying a condominium first of all you get to live in a prime location you find that most of these conditions uh, you find that most of these condominiums are in really prime locations you get to stay in places like Nalia, you get to stay in places like Kulambiro, you get to stay in places like Muyenga, Chisasi, Dinda, you know um, because land in those areas is, is really really expensive and of course it's close to town so people want to stay as, as much as possible close to town okay um, probably uh, also the other advantages you have with, with having a condominium is that you get to enjoy other amenities at really subsidized prices uh, like sports facilities, gym. Of course not all condominiums have all those sports facilities, okay? Not all condominiums not all condominiums have all those nice facilities like gym, you have steam bath, you have sauna, you have a uh, saloon around, you have uh, you know a lot of things, swimming pool. Not all condominiums do really come with such packages, but those that do come with packages you get to enjoy such services at really um at really subsidized prices but but of course uh however much they come at a subsidized price uh, sometimes you might not be able to keep up with the monthly fees that you actually have to pay the monthly condominium fee that you have to be paying after you bought your house i mean you bought your house but you still have to be paying monthly expenses okay you're paying the uh, i mean who takes care of the security i mean who takes care of the security who takes care of a swimming pool who makes sure that everything is in order you know Things like that. So there is literally a committee, and you are required to pay a monthly fee, usually about you know it could be thirty dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, depending on the depending on the condominium and uh, the kind of agreement that you have. But there is always a monthly fee that you are required to be paying. So if you are looking at having a condominium as a family home or as a retirement home, I would say no. It will not be advisable for you to get a condominium because uh, there, there are rules of using the premises you get. There is a maximum number of people you can have living in your house. Okay, there is a there, there are basically a lot of rules that you have to follow here and there, and also the monthly fees if you're doing it as a retirement house and you know you want a place where you live forever and you know you've aged and you can't keep up with that monthly fee of paying to the paying to the to the to the, to the community. You know, it might be hectic for you, but if you're looking at it in terms of investment, I mean uh, these 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 places are in prime locations. Okay. So you could, you could just buy for yourself a condominium and then you just use it as an investment. So you keep renting it out for Airbnb or for visitors coming into the country or start renting it to someone else. That, 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 that would really work for you. It would be a good um, financial security, you know, to know that I have a place I bought somewhere and it, it keeps generating income for me, okay? So that would be really a good thing to do. And of course, there are really quite a number of, of, of upcoming condominiums in Uganda. Quite, I, I have... I have quite a number of colleagues uh, that are, are dealing with condominiums here and there, okay? And they're really, it's really a lucrative industry. Um, then for, of course, buying your home, you know, you get to have your land title of the whole premises. In the future, you decide what you do with it, you know, you can decide to add more things on your houses, you can decide to sell it off, the, land, the value of that land is definitely growing. But uh, in terms of costs, if you have to really compare the costs of the two, it would actually be cheaper to build your own house. It's actually much cheaper much cheaper to build your own house a uh, much cheaper to build your own house and of course also in terms of sustainability i mean this is your land it's not like your land title is a condominium title you get uh, so you get get to do whatever you want on your piece of land you get to be able to resell it at your own terms and conditions and you know all that so 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 depending on what you really want you, you could just get the two and see where you actually lie okay can a foreigner build the house in uganda Okay. Um, first of all, uh, um, a foreigner. A foreigner is basically someone who doesn't have citizenship in Uganda. Okay, that is what uh, that is what qualifies you to be a foreigner. If you have Ugandan citizenship or by birth, naturalization or registration or anything, you qualify to be a citizen of Uganda. Okay. But uh, so owning a house in Uganda, if you're a foreigner, first of all, if you can own land, then you can own a house. Now, foreigners actually have a right to own land in the country, in Uganda, uh, but, but, the, but the, the, um, by the kind of title to the land, by the kind of entitlement to the land is actually limited. Uh, you can only have a leasehold title. You know, leasehold starts from 15 years, 20 years, usually 49 years and 99 years, okay? So you can have a leasehold title, so you can actually own land. Uh, if it's a company, 
if it's a company, uh, a company also owned by non-Ugandans can actually also own land in Uganda, can also actually own land in Uganda, but they can own it on leasehold, okay? Either 49 years or 99 years. So if this company is to, is to own a freehold title, that means you have full entitlement, a lifetime entitlement to the piece of land until you decide you want to sell it off. The, the, the company has to have, uh, the, the, the ownership has to be more than 51% Ugandan, okay? So if it's more than 51% Ugandan, then you can, the company can actually own a, a freehold title, okay? Uh, then um, if you are Ugandan, really, that's really easy. Uh, if you're Ugandan, you can also own a freehold title, okay? Uh, so bottom line, so bottom line, yes, a foreigner can own land in Uganda comfortably, okay, and live comfortably. We have quite a number of them here. And then the other question, um, do you charge for consultation? If yes, if yes, how much? Wow. Yes and no. Um, of course, I, I wouldn't be out there charging someone for just a five minutes phone call, okay? You call me and you just want to ask me something or just to, to inquire about something. That's really fine. I'll just give it to you. Just like I'm here providing free information to you really at no charge. Uh, but then if uh, the consultation requires me to now get physically involved and, you know, engage my team and start making calculations, for example, knowing how much a house would cost you, um, dissecting your house and breaking down for you how many iron bars you'll need, um, um, how many bags you'll, how many bags of cement you'll need, how many iron bars of what type you'll need, da, 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 all that, you know. That really will cost money because uh, the time is valuable, you know. If it also requires me to burn my fuel and go to the site probably and, you know, uh, check it out and, you know, things like that, that, that is definitely, <laughs> that is definitely value, okay. You need to pay for it. It's just it's just a decent way of doing things. So I hope that was valuable information. If you like this information and you want to receive more information concerning construction and real estate and architecture and business and da 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 da, da, da please subscribe. Uh, you are very much welcome. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, uh, otherwise, thank you very much for following. Please remember to like, remember to share. Um, remember to be happy. Have a good time.